Hello and welcome to Chinivision. This time, portable computing, 1982 style. We were asking around on eBay the other week, and after I've been reading those issues of PCN back from the early 80s, with all those portable computers, I saw this on sale. A uh, sharp pocket computer, a PC1251, but with the full package, and it comes in this vinyl case. Um, nothing much exciting on the outside. 1982 uh, brown. Um, so we flip it open. Two little poppers there, and look what we've got inside. I've not really looked at this in detail. And what I will say um, about this is I'm not an expert in these. Um, I've got as much information as I can find. There's probably people on YouTube who are avid collectors of these pocket computers. There appears to be a massive range of these models um, all the way through until, well, apparently there's, according to the Centre for Computing History, there's versions of this or sharp portable pocket calculator type things going on till 2006 so I'm guessing this could be a really big thing but we'll get a little wallet to keep your computer in because there's two aspects um, in here you've got the little computer here but this also comes with this extra bit if I can pull this out here you can see the computer sits in a little case there but we'll look at that in a second because I want to see what else we get in this box we flip open here and we've got um, thermal printer rolls there, lots and lots of those. Uh, oh, yeah, death adapter. Um, that's not, what is it? It's uh, eight and a half volts. Um, so you could probably get away with nine volt supply. That's not, don't even attempt to get one like this. That's snapped off. Don't even attempt to use this in any way, shape, or form. Um, no. Dreadful. It needs uh, 350 milliamps. Nothing. I would, oh, it's sensor negative as well. Okay. And looking at that connector, I would say you would be quite okay. Okay, it's half a volt more, but I reckon a spectrum power supply, a modern one regulated, would probably be fine. Um, and we get little um, dictaphone tapes. And I don't know what's on these, but there appears to be one in there as well. So we can look at that. Um, so I'm going to refer to the Centre for Computing History, who I'm thieving the description off their site. Um, with the PC1251, Sharp started off their product range of really tiny pocket computers. It was the third original design after the PC121 and the PC1500 uh, series. Contrary to its predecessors, it really was pocket size, measuring only 135 by 70 by 9.5 millimeters. Nevertheless, it featured a 24 character display with four kilobytes of RAM, and it even outclassed the PC1500 Basic. The major drawback of the new design was the tiny keys are only compatible with pointed fingers. The PC1251 was based on a new 8 bit CMOS microprocessor, the SC618660, which is mounted on the main PCB located with the display driver chip, the SC4. 43536. On an additional small PCB, 24 kilobytes of ROM and two 4K 4 kilobits, uh, kilobytes RAM were located. A new feature was also the reserve memory, which allowed to assign even more use basic commands or functions to 18 of the alphanumeric keys. Um, the PC1250 was the same as the machine, but only had two kilobytes. So this is the 1251. So it's got 4K, 1982, 4K in there. Um, and they've got details of what they've got and yeah, it looks like the original models before this came out in 1980 and then this was 1982 and that's about it they've got on there. So it, it's basically a little pocket computer um, that you can use as a scientific calculator, I'm guessing, and also write basic, little basic programs and, and things on. So let's have a look at the unit itself. Let's get rid of this lot for a second. So here we have the unit and actually this should, there we go, that is the computer on its own. And yeah, we've got screen rot going on in there unfortunately. Um, 
Unfortunately, he did mention that in the listing when I bought it. These can go for a fair amount of money. I think this is about £30, pounds, um, probably because the screen, uh, the collectors don't want it, but it should be good enough for us. The um, Apparently, you can run this on two coin cells, which uh, fit inside, take two screws off there. Um, yeah, three volts by two coin cells there. Um, the reset button on there, contrast button on the side. Um, and yeah, I don't, this is not going to, no, there's no batteries in there. Um, but it won't turn on its own. But if I had batteries in there, it would. And you could just use this on its own. Um, of course, the batteries will give you some uh, storage uh, for the memory as well. Um, but uh, so this is going to forget anything at the moment unless we turn it off. We'll save it. Uh, so the unit connects in via those little pins on there into there. A little diagram on there. And then this is the uh, tape drive slash printer unit, which is an extra. Um, even has a separate manual for that so hopefully that goes in like that goes in like that goes slots in like that and then along like that so um what we've got on the side here we have a i assume that's an external tape there on the side power supply and nothing much else on the round there you've got the contrast button on your thing there but that's already on the little cassette a uh, little uh, unit there little cassette recorder which has a tape in it they are application softwares so that must have come with it presumably we can see what's on there um that allows it to the remote socket there allows it to control the tape recorder or not because you may want to rewind it so you can turn the remote off put the remote back on and then the computer controls it a uh, low battery if you're running this off battery power uh, turn the printer on and off, presumably to save battery again. And that's that's about it. And you've got your thermal printer roll in in there. Um, which I'd, I'd hope would be, oh, I've got lots of spares, but I hope that's fairly standard. It doesn't, it looks fairly straightforward. Feed it in, press the button. So it all comes with two manuals, which are stashed in the back of the storage case that it comes with. Um, 200 pages for the main computer. Um and uh, all, all good stuff um, about programming because you're going to be programming this in, with BASIC. Basically, it's a, it's a, a pocket calculator that has a BASIC, um, and you can program all sorts of things in there, your own applications, and so on. Um, and you've got a separate manual for the printer and the cassette recorder unit, um, which is again is another seventy odd pages there. So I've got a nine volt supply here. And we're going to pop that in. Hopefully, tested this briefly at Christmas when a friend came around, but not really used it apart from that. So um, we'll flick it on and see what happens. Yeah, we've got life. Um, all seems to work there. So it all comes with two manuals, which are stashed in the back of the storage case that it comes with. Um, 200 pages for the main computer um, and uh, all, all good stuff um, about programming because you're going you're gonna to be programming this in, with BASIC basically it's, a, it's a, a pocket calculator that has a BASIC um, and you can program all sorts of things in there your own applications and so on um, and you've got a separate manual for the printer and the cassette recorder unit um, which is again is another 70 odd pages there so i've got a nine volt supply here and we're going to pop that in hopefully tested this briefly at christmas when a friend came around but not really used it apart from that so um we'll flick it on and see what happens yeah we've got life um all seems to work there um, as that display is a bit destroyed, I'm just going to move myself so I can see it a bit better. Yeah, that's eaten in badly at the top there, hasn't it, really? Right, if you can see that there, and I can't, but you'll see that there's a lot of LCD rot in there. Um, that is where damp gets into screens. Do not store your LCD-based devices, Game Boys, whatever, somewhere where damp can get in attics outdoor storage uh, larry bundy jr's shed and sorry larry i 
the, your stories about that really <laughs> so painful. I'm so sorry that happened to you with all the stuff that was destroyed in your storage. Um, but anywhere damp, really, um, don't put them. It can, this can happen anyway, um, by all accounts, but this really will exasper exasperate it. Um, so don't do it. This clearly means someone's attic or something like that. So here we have the unit. Um, and you've got this switch here, which you switch to what we wanted to do. So you run to run software, program to program software, and reserve mode there as well. And that button, oh, the printer's on. That will uh, line the printer up for you as well. We've got our remote on there. It says low battery there as well. Now, apparently, according to the manual, buried away somewhere in there, there's a NICAD rechargeable battery inside there um, from 1982. I bet that's in good condition. Um, it, it certainly doesn't hold a charge. I hope it hasn't leaked everywhere. I might have to inspect that at some stage. But yeah, usually you could apparently run this entire thing off the rechargeable battery that's inside this main unit here. So you turn it on and it goes straight into a basic mode here. So if we go print, I'm guessing print space, uh, shift, hello, shift, then press enter, error one. Well, okay. Um, obviously that doesn't work. Oh, it's not in pro. Of course, this is the thing. Just being on isn't enough. It's got to be <laughs> program mode. So let's try again. 10 space print space shift. Hello. Shift. Enter 20 space. Let's put a simple loop on there. Go to 10. It's annoying that the, um, because of course this is primarily a calculator as well. The numbers are much larger than the rest. It's really fiddly. Go to 10, enter. Right. So then we flick it into run mode and go run. Hello, it works. Fantastic. Well, I'm pleased with myself. Okay, it's, that's about the simplest program you can do, but it works. Um, that, that's very pleasing. How do you, oh no, there you go. I'm presuming you can go to list as well. See it back. Can we print our listing? Hmm, let's see if I can do that. So it says, it should be L list. Think according to the manual. Oh yeah. Hey, hey. And there we go. L list prints out your uh, your current listing. How funky! It's, it's a thermal printer. It's very slow um, compared to modern ones, and very noisy. And we think of all the thermal printers you see in day to day use when you go to the shops and you get your receipt. Um, they're quite often thermal printers, but I like I like that. That's really cool. That's really cool. So as I say, um, had a friend over at Christmas, and uh, he had a bit more experience of these units than I do, and he programmed in a little game. So here's some footage I shot. So we've got Sharp here, and what have we got on here? You have 15 matches left. How many would you like to take? Um, three. And what is this? You programmed this in basic. Indeed. Oh, right. Eleven left. How many would you like to take? Two. He took two. And there are now seven left. How many would you like to take? The aim is to not take the last match. Three. He took three. There's one left. How many shall I take? Or well, is only one left? You can't take any. Computer wins. You did print out that listing, so we can see. Don't do it. So yeah, that all worked really well. He programmed in a game just from memory, <laughs> having done this thirty years ago, and it it all worked brilliantly. Um, and we printed out the listing. It's it's really good. Okay, so now time to find out what's on this Sharp Application Softwares 
uh, cassette. So we pop it in there, pop it in, uh, rewind, making sure the remote is off. Although it won't let me. It's come to the end, I think. Put the remote back on, and let's try and load something in. So according to the manual, um, you can actually use an external cassette as well if you want to. You could, so you could use a full size tape, but we're going to use the micro cassette. And it looks like Microsoft Basic. It's all C load, C save, merge, and all the chain as well. So pretty standard stuff. There's one thing I keep on noticing in the manual with regards to the peripherals. Um, in this case, with the cassette recorder, if the batteries become low or if the CE125 is subjected to strong noise, the unit may cease to function and the PC1251 may hang up. Um, it also explains elsewhere in the manual that the printer can also go haywire. So, <laughs> so it probably doesn't pass the old FCC um, regulations about being able to accept electromagnetic interference without going completely bonkers. Anyway, let's see if we can load anything off the cassette. So let's try, uh, is it in program mode? C load. Let's just try and, I guess that's gonna work. And press play. See what happens, is that turning? Seems to be. Right, got a little bit of a weight on then, haven't I? Oh, hang on, we've got noise. I was sipping my drink. If you can hear that. Aha, I have got a listing of what's on the cassette. Um, it all looks fascinating. Ho oh, ho, Newton's method for finding roots of equations. <laughs> Matrix product, numerical integration using Simpson's rule. Um, oh, but it actually has got the tape counter on there as well. And we do have some games on there. Um, so we can always fast forward to those. But I think uh, Newton's method of finding roots of equations is probably a bit beyond me and, and this channel as a whole. Okay, so I'm forwarding to uh, 392 on the tape. I'm going to do typing practice on this keyboard. So, right, okay. Right, so I should hopefully be loading a typing practice game according to the manual. Assuming the tape counter is still correct. Um, and they calibrated them properly to begin with, originally. <laughs> Error eight. We'll just try run and see what happens. Run. Grade one, two, we got something working. Excellent, right, here we go. Top gaming act, well, not gaming action, top typing action on the uh, sharp 1251. Right, one, we're going to one. It's beeping. I've got to go E, E, B, Z, T, X, Q, E, X, X, Q. No, I've broken it. <laughs> So again, run, grade one. D-O-F-B, D-O-F-B. Oh, I'm not pressing the keys hard enough. Let's get you in closer. No, I'm not pressing the keys hard enough oh, correctly, have I? Right, no, I've got zero. Enter again, let's try run. Again, grade one. On, enter. US, U, S. Why is there a break in 80? I pressed J, I didn't press anything else, and I've got a break in 80. Might be the keyboard's up to spell, so I don't know. Grade one, enter. E, is that, an, is that an O? E, 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 O, G, Q, Y. Is 
that a D? I can't see. D, U, U. You got to press these keys hard. Or it may not be. It's registering it very fast because the slow processor, D, U, S. Oh, dear. I can't even see what that character is. Is an N? It's into the area of rot. Well, I can't see it. N. V. <laughs> N. V. A. 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 Q. Oh, no, I need a K. No, 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 no. Oh, no, I got it wrong. I need... Can I delete? No, I got it wrong. U. No. No. I think it's just slow to respond. Y. G. Y. No, no, no. G. Y. B. E. E. Q. Well, this is enormous fun, isn't it? I mean, it's more fun than Rick the Roadie. D, actually from this angle. <laughs> with the rot on the screen, so I can't see what's on the left. I, um, see, and the keys respond better than Death Kick as well. So it's already, got, it's already one up on those. How long does this go on for? How am I going to get a score? Is that a D? 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 C, B, 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 S, S, S. It's the basic, so slow, it doesn't, it's not the keyboard, it's the, right, I've had enough of this now, let's press break and, right, we've loaded in something, I don't think it's what I think it is, because it kept on skipping and um, past the numbers for the biorhythm game, this could be soft landing game or memory checker, uh, we are at fourth. Uh, it could be memory checker. So I don't know what this is, but we'll give it a go. Run. Mem oh, it's the memory check game. It's having problems loading some of these bits of software off the cassette. So we'll see what this is. Right. I've got to remember. <laughs> it wants me to remember all of that, um, which I couldn't even see when it was up. So uh, we type some things in. Yeah, in this game, actually, the keyboard response is absolutely fine. So it was the other game that was just a bit slow. No, I'm not getting this right, am I? Um, but we can go into the basic and go list and just see it. Oh, you can't. Is it L list? Which you can't list it to the screen, but... Uh, Oh, of course, you need to be in programming mode, don't you? Doll. Now try this. Do you need to use the keys to go through, do you? There you go. So there's the cursor keys to go through the listing. Of course, we can print it out straight to the printer, can't we? Let's bring the printer down so you can see that there. And I should be going to L list. That should. Here we go. I love this. This is great. I I, I love printers like this. Is the kind of really cool bit. You've got this tiny little printer in there. Doesn't need ink, just prints onto the thermal paper paper. Thermal paper that's uh, 37, 38 years old, something like that, 1982, 36 years old. Big old listing. I'm not editing this. I'm not editing this. This is this is gold. As far as I'm concerned, this is exactly what Jim Vision should be about. <laughs> Watching a thermal printer do its thing. I don't know if you can see in there any better than that. You can't. You can I can just see the shadow of the print head there. But it's all hidden. 
Big old, big old listing. There we go. Sorry for the bang on the microphone, but I, I simply had to get the microphone in so you could hear that. Oh, the microphone's falling over. And we press the button a bit. And then we tear off our listing. And there we go. And there we go. That's our, our computer software listing for a, a memory. Test. I mean, it all looks very standard basic to me. Um, very standard. If you can program basic on most computers, this all looks very straightforward. There's a little bit of a reproduction issue on some of the characters. A um, little bit not as clear as it could be, but it's an i 82 thermal printer, so, you know, it is what it is. Should be pointed out, of course, the processor in this is only 576 kilohertz. So that's half of one megahertz. So if the basic is a little bit slow in implementation at times, then yeah, well, you know, it's, it's probably the only computer you've got that actually runs in the kilohertz range as opposed to megahertz. The machine was also sold as the Tandy TRS-80 Pocket Computer PC3 as well. Uh, Tandy used to like to rebadge Japanese uh, bits of kit and uh, sell them themselves in places like the USA and the UK. So I got this far and you're saying to yourself, Chinny, this thing's a bit ridiculous. Um, it, it can't word process, it can't run spreadsheets. It's basically a pocket calculator that runs basic that you can put programs into that you can run in text. And yeah, that's exactly what it is. This isn't a portable computer in terms of how you think of it today. And if I tell you the place you find this advertised is the new scientist, that may give you a clue the kind of people who were buying these. They were scientists. They were people who wanted not just an advanced calculator uh, that can do scientific functions. They wanted a bit of program things in so they could do more advanced type of calculations. The clue is in this manual. Um, when we talk about finding square roots, uh, numerical integration using Simpson's rule, and that's not Homer Simpson either, um, average variance and standard deviation, correlation coefficient and linear regression, histograms, conversions of triangles to Ys, that's, that's proper scientific stuff, that is, um, tr you know, turning a triangle into a Y and converting that, whew, you know. So there, that clothoid curve, which I paid attention in maths at school. Too busy talking about Amstrad games for people sitting next to me. Um, that's the kind of thing. It's not the kind of computer that you'd have even a few years later, like the Amstrad PPC 640 and 512, where you could do word, one word star on them, what have you. These are going to labs. These are being sold to scientists. These are being used for scientific and mathematical applications, that kind of thing. And therefore, it's really not the kind of computer that perhaps you or I would have owned. Perhaps you or I, my friend Aidan um, from Sixth Form sometimes watches Chini Vision. He's the kind of person who like this because he did maths A-level and physics and things like that. Hi Aidan, if you're watching. Um, he would love this kind of thing um, because it does all that advanced scientific physics and things that you'd want. Um, and for that, it's absolutely fantastic. You can store it all on your tape. Um, so you can write your program and save it. Or you can save it to external tape as well if you want it a bit more reliable. Because as we've seen, I haven't cleaned the tape heads in this. I mean, you know what dictaphone tapes sound like? Half the bandwidth of normal cassettes. Um, yeah, I'm not surprised that's flaky, especially if it's over 30 years old. But you can, of course, save it off to a normal size cassette on the side there as well. For what it is, um, I believe the unit cost £100, the external printer and cassette recorder cost £79. That's not bad value, really, for a scientific instrument. You might say we have a spectrum of £129, or a bit more than that. Oh no, for a 16K in 1982. 
for the same with this and that's got more RAM. Yeah, but you can take this into your lab. It's got a display. It runs off battery. This thing has NICADs inside it. I dread to think what they look like now, but it has them in there. Um, and that would be a fantastic thing for a scientist or mathematician or physicist to use. It's not the kind of computer you or I would want, although it's fantastic to collect and own as a, as a thing to have. Um, but for the day, very good value and extremely powerful for the size and the functionality you get.